Yeah, I'm Rob Lyon uh, from Penn State. I work in our animal science department, and uh, my primary charge and my extension appointment is to coordinate education for our uh, commercial manure hauler and broker programs with a lot of the community management issues. But one issue that uh, we've come across here in recent history involves gypsum bedding. And my main goal today is to just bring an awareness to our community uh, about this issue and uh, inform people on it and hopefully we can pass some of this information on to people that you might work with. So what is gypsum bedding? Uh, it's simply a byproduct of the construction industry. It's drywall material that's brought to the dairy. Uh, we have a couple companies in Pennsylvania that are uh, recycling this material and supplying it to the dairy as a low cost uh, bedding input. And uh, it's a calcium sulfate uh, product. I have an S here in blue, highlighting the sulfur and the hydrogen sulfide uh, product that we are expecting and seeing uh, in, the, in this uh, degradation of the material in the manure storage is causing issues. So it is used in the Northeast region. I'm unsure of the widespread use in other areas of the country. Uh, I'm going to give you a few uh, case studies, if you will, tell you about uh, what, the, what happened with these uh, issues and why it has come to light for us. Uh, this first farm had two unconscious children. If you look at this uh, manure story for this dairy, uh, this photo was taken by Dave Hill, uh, one of our counterparts at Penn State in our safety program, uh, three days after the incident. If you look here at the uh, lower part of the train, you can see where the tractor is it's hooked up to the agitation and loading equipment uh, for the manure removal. Uh, the father went there one morning and began to agitate the uh, system for manure removal. Instead of climbing up to this ladder uh, to look into see how his agitation was going, he walked around. So you can see the strain of the gravel here. Uh, he walked around to look over the edge instead of climbing up. Um, so he walked around toward this end. You can get a feel for uh, the gravel or the terrain level in relation to the storage here and see the agitation equipment in the background. Um, so the elevation difference uh, becomes important in the story because uh, he was able to discover his children uh, unconscious in this area. This manure storage photo here was three days after a lot of manure had been removed, so the level actually was higher uh, on the third day of the incident. Here's what he found. He found uh, his unconscious two-year-old at this tricycle and a uh, four-year-old on this bicycle. At the bottom photo, you can see the uh, relationship of the tricycle in the background. This is a shoe uh, from a two-year-old. So uh, these boys were not simply just riding along and fell asleep. They had road rash. They hit the skids pretty hard. Uh, so we highly suspect that hydrogen sulfide uh, was the culprit and at a concentration of 500 parts per million or higher. Uh, probably six to seven hundred parts. The uh, boys with blue in appearance took over 30 minutes to review, to revive the boys. Uh, and at this farm, we had a product of gypsum and sawdust uh, being used in bedding. So it was a, a mixed product that they were using. Uh, here's a photo from the day of the incident. You can see where the tricycle is. If you look closely here, uh, they come out in grayish color. They come to us PDF style uh, from someone on the scene. Tric tricycles here. The agitation equipment you can see running and get a feel for how close the boys were to that uh, agitation, that movement of manure. Hydrogen sulfide is a gas that is heavier than air, so we expect that cloud is sort of hanging low to the ground the boys were. But there's good news here. The boys are okay. Dave took this picture a couple days later uh, and uh, three days later. They were riding in the golf cart and not in a hearse, so that was good news. The uh, other stories we have are not quite as good. After uh, the talks this morning on dead horses and burying Trigger and Bambi, it's uh, not the best uh, cheery stuff we had to talk about today, but important. Uh, farm number two, uh, after a couple incidents, uh, this, this gentleman, a plain clothes uh, farmer, called us and left a message and said, we did have an incident as well. It never made the newspapers. We didn't even know about it, but it was in 2011. Uh, in this uh, milking barn, a two-year-old was found at this site where the arrow is pointing to. These uh, gutters 
are collecting manure, taking it down to the end of the barn and then out uh, under the floor to the manure storage uh, in this direction. The father was agitating his manure system and uh, certainly that uh, underfloor pit could have acted as a uh, air channel to suck the uh, hydrogen sulfide in. We highly suspect hydrogen sulfide. We can't say for sure that uh, hydrogen sulfide was the culprit or not. Uh, but gypsum bedding was being used at that point at this farm as well. The third farm is an uh, incident that's been widely publicized. We had three deaths in Kennedyville, Maryland. These uh, people were all from Pennsylvania. Two of them, unfortunately, had been through my program, had, had some safety training. Now, the father, an 18 year old and a 14 year old, uh, all family members uh, died. This farm looks like a lot of other farms might look pretty innocent when you go to it. Uh, the bodies were recovered from storage. The truck and the tractor were still operating, running, hours later when rescuers came on site. The bodies were nowhere to be seen. Uh, so the, the, the fact that these machines were still running indicates that you know, somebody came upon, we expect the father uh, who was at the uh, neighbors at the last uh, known contact with him probably drove up the door of the truck was open came upon a scene where his children were uh, in peril so he uh, tried to rescue these folks uh, the bar the barn uh, bedded with gypsum only and I talked with a later Norhaler uh, someone in my program who went to the farm a couple months later to help them out and he operated just the agitation equipment was filling the uh, tanks to take the field, and he was just stationed there. And he reports and testifies that he had uh, ear eye irritation so bad that whenever he looked at the floor of the manure tank that was 20 yards away, he couldn't see it. Uh, his eye specialist uh, said that he had about uh, four or five layers of what appeared to have just stripped from his eyeball. So uh, that is the testimony he gave me, and he regained his sight in about three days. Uh, you know, I had questioned him, you know, if you knew three people died here and you came to work and you had these symptoms, why did you not get out? And well, it wasn't, you know, he was just determined to get the work done. Now here's some uh, photos of the farm, you know, the manure storage, uh, and the family. I pilfered these off of the internet. I've not visited this farm, but bodies were recovered from this site, uh, from the manure storage. Again, we can't be sure if it's hydrogen sulfide, but we highly suspect it. Uh, the bottom is the, uh, the medical examiner will get manure in all the lungs of all three victims, and uh, it's un, you know, cannot determine hydrogen sulfide. So a fourth farm that I've read about, uh, I'm gonna bring up, because it's just a little different, and a good reminder for all of us. So in uh, British Columbia, a man was working at the speed lot, so he had solid manure, and he noticed his dog unconscious. He got off the tractor, administer CPR to his dog, and uh, luckily before he did that, he called his brother and his mother, and they were able to come and rescue him because he become, became unconscious. Uh, the dog did die. But a reminder that uh, it does not need to be liquid, and it does not have, need to have gypsum to be a potentially deadly situation. Right? When all gases uh, can be anywhere. The degradation of organic matter uh, certainly producing gases. But one thing you'll notice, we talked about four different sites. Uh, if you think about the three, the two stories were liquid manure storage, and one was the child was in a barn. And in here, uh, the feedlot uh, storage area. In all those cases, uh, those are open air scenarios and a little bit different than what we traditionally think of as confined spaces. So we've developed an extension handout. I'll let Gene and Josh just ask them back. Uh, addressing some of the concerns we have about open air storages. Traditionally, we think of confined spaces, but think about once you cross that fence, you're in a place that's not designed for normal human occupancy. So that could be considered a confined space. And awareness from this group to our producers is something that we can all uh, try to pass on. An additional scenario for concern is when we break our cross. I'm uh, talking to some people in our community that are specialists in hydrogen sulfide movement. Uh, that breaking of crust uh, can actually be crust and trap some hydrogen sulfide underneath it, and we can have a great uh, release of hydrogen sulfide. Think about the four farms we talked about. In all four of those situations, manure was being moved. 
So when we move uh, the north, we can greatly increase the flux rate, the emission rate, or the evolution of uh, the gas. And the example that I give to our producers or our agronomers a lot is just shaking up a can of Pepsi. Right? If I shake this up and hand it to you, you don't want to open it. Now that's a simple example, but most people can relate to it. So we had two uh, very early studies. Uh, so these are, uh, well, I'll say pre-trial work, uh, one in Wisconsin and one in Penn State. Uh, certainly don't hang your hat on what we have here. Uh, statistics aren't uh, part of what, we're, what we have. We're just done some bench top scale, uh, small volume uh, uh, treatments with gypsum, no gypsum, or a high, uh, no gypsum as a control, a low amount of gypsum or a high amount of gypsum at our Penn State study. Uh, Dr. Wheeler's here, uh, she did this in her lab, and um, I guess my auto friend at all turned into a teal, I mean, sorry about that. Um, the, the things here that I wanna highlight is that uh, Mike Kyle actually agitated the manure. Uh, he would take a reading every so often, and then he would take the reading, then he would actually read it again right after agitation. So if you look at the higher bars here, the uh, orange bar versus the blue bar, and the times uh, are out a uh, number of hours, but uh, the bars in purple versus the green, those are the ones immediately after agitation. So just highlighting the point here that we saw an elevated hydrogen sulfide uh, release with gypsum uh, versus control, but also agitation certainly did spike that. Uh, Dr. Rebecca Larson is here as well from Wisconsin. They've done a couple uh, uh, treatments as well with gypsum versus no gypsum. Similar results, they have found that the, uh, the, the hydrogen sulfide increases uh, in the manure with gypsum in it. So a couple reminders for most of us that confined spaces can be deadly. We should not enter them. I think most of us know that. Uh, gases can cause unconsciousness or uh, loss of life. I always assume there are gases present. Uh, remember that some are odorless, colorless, explosive. Some sink, like hydrogen sulfide, some will rise, like methane. Um, and I like to tell my guys, if it ain't oxygen, you ain't breathing. It may not be a toxic gas, but if it displaces the oxygen in this room, we cannot uh, survive. So I often tell a story about uh, the time my kids were little and I killed their gerbils. Right, we had an aquarium, they had two gerbils. The cat started to get in there, so I put a, a poster board for one of my extension meetings on top of it, put a heavy book on it, went to work, came home, and the gerbils were dead. Because I created it, and I created a confined space for them. And I don't know what killed them, but we had biological activity in there, degradation of their litter. Uh, and you thought, I should know better. And it's easy to forget these simple things. If you come over, if you are overcome by gas, or find someone overcome by gas, do not try to rescue them. Ventilate the area, try to get fresh air to the body as opposed to pulling the body out. You're doing the same objective, right? Get oxygen to them. Call 911, uh, cease the agitation or movement of the more. 22% so one out of five, or closer, to, uh, getting close to one out of four. Uh, in fine space, deaths in agriculture occur to rescuers. And always carry uh, some kind of uh, communication device. If you need to go into a confined space, make sure you have a plan. Uh, you know, we can have oxygen insufficiency, combustion gases, or toxic gases. Measure the area, ventilate, buddy up, make sure you have secure harnesses on. So there are a couple uh, gypsum policies of note. Uh, getting back to gypsum, uh, European Union, we have seen some bans in landfills and also in bedding of, of gypsum. So the problem has uh, a run ahead of us uh, in Europe versus uh, the, U the US. So they maybe have a little more information. We can't find a lot of study work there. So remember the open area, uh, all any time we're on the north, we have that organic degradation. We need to have respect around that and suspect that we have problems. I've been talking a lot about this issue with our manure haulers and I'm using the word uh, terminology of body alarms. So if you're in the hotel tonight and the fire alarm goes off at 2 o'clock in the morning, what are you going to do? Well, not many of us would want to roll over and go back to sleep. Your body has alarms. If you're around the manure 
and you think you, your body's giving you a, an alarm, headache, eye irritation, severe uh, irritation in your, your bronchial area, uh, stumbling, fatigue, anxiety. There's a lot of uh, different symptoms that we can all talk about in 20 minutes today. But your body setting the alarm. You're the really only one in the body to listen to the alarm and get out. Uh, so more information is needed. So besides creating awareness with my talk, I also want to encourage people that if you have some work you're doing where measuring this uh, might be part of that, please do so. And uh, please, pass, please pass these concerns to your producer and clientele, especially if they have gypsum involved. So with that, I will take questions at this time. And we're all, uh, seems like we're all happy after that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I guess phosphorus is going up, not the last minute right, but we're going to have a Thanks, Ralph, for your presentation. And uh, we do have time for a couple of questions while I get our next speaker as we transition for, from that session to the uh, phosphorus in the environment session. Um, if anybody has any questions, while well, I. Are you, are you translating these materials into Spanish? Gene asked if we're translating these into, the, into Spanish and he wrote the pen. I hadn't thought about that. Most of that workers are our yeah. staff. So that's a great idea. And, and they absolutely actually do. Just so we have warnings, they're personal triggers because they're generally afraid to say anything if something is wrong. And we have had deaths in other places as well. Right. And in one space. So. Bilingual, language, language. Yes. I have a question as much as just a statement. I'm from Minnesota, and they had been started in the late 1800s, requiring 1980s, requiring fencing around all the because the children that were out playing in the case of the right to the ice of the place, they can't spread the ice to that stuff. Right. And they couldn't find them. So, uh, fencing is an issue. Child died about five years ago, and some things well was uh, listed in health claim. Um, I did not present data from a Purdue study uh, that deals with fever with a double bus decline stage and an aggravated death of the smoking. And we analyze what happened to the first team out of 112 on the study of these cases for children that were listed as claims. That's one thing that I like to pass on as well. That if we have a child, we can make decisions for them. If we have children that do not understand it, it's a threat to the military and the safety of care. So, as a caretaker for the property, we have uh, neighbors, children, and grandchildren, people who go down to the country, who make a number of things. Not quite, so we've got... Any other questions or comments? 